In a more quantitative way, it may be helped to do a quick recap so far of sections up to eight, and also the most important equations that we'll be using from now onwards. And you can find this also in the lecture notes in section 8.2. In addition, it is important to point out that on Moodle, you actually have a two-page slide containing the most important equations, those that you should actually know. They are the simplest, and some of these equations are there, but definitely not the equation for the black body. You're not expected to memorize that, and you're also not expected to memorize any of the complicated constants that you're using. You'll be able to actually look them up, for example, in the worksheets. Before we really discuss stars, it is also important to recap essentially the way that the important equations that we've just seen, how they can be linked and used together to essentially go from direct observations on top. This would be, for example, a spectrum or measuring a parallax angle or an apparent magnitude and how you can combine, for example, a parallax angle with an apparent magnitude to get an absolute magnitude that would then allow you to calculate a luminosity in, for example, solar units. But on the other hand, by taking a spectrum and using Wien's law, or for example, by calculating a color, you can estimate the temperature. And this will allow you, when you combine it with a total luminosity, to get a measurement of the area of the star, and therefore to essentially know how big the star is. We've also seen that by doing spectroscopy and exploring the Boltzmann and the Saha equation, we can also get a measurement of temperature spectroscopically. And throughout the previous sections, we've also seen a lot of examples and questions where all these ingredients are put together so that you can go from direct observations to the actual physical measurements of stars that we'll be using, such as luminosity and size. So far, we already used solar units, but it is important to point out that this will become even more important from now onwards. One of the reasons is because we can measure these properties really well for the sun, and therefore, by comparing it with properties of other stars, we can very easily measure them. You don't really need to memorize all these solar quantities. They would be given, although it is good to have a decent idea of what is, for example, the temperature of the sun and its absolute magnitude or the apparent magnitudes, but you don't really have to memorize. It's also good to realize that in B minus V, the sun would actually be a red star. Another important thing to point out is, of course, that all these are actually average quantities because they change slightly with time. The sun is not producing exactly the same luminosity at all the time, and it can also change its color a little bit. It can actually go through cycles where there's a lot of sunspots and the sun is slightly darker versus when there's no spots at all. And the other thing to be aware of, and this is also explained in the lecture notes, is that the symbol M with the solar units can actually be used for both mass and for absolute magnitudes. Although if you're talking about an absolute magnitude, there will be no units. And also the quantity is going to be very, very different. And if you're talking about masses, it should be in kilograms and the number will be very big. And in addition, throughout the lecture notes, I'll always try to be as clear as possible so you're never confused between an absolute magnitude in solar units and the mass of the sun in solar units.